Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com. Today I want to talk to you about are you experiencing digital dementia and how to fix it. Digital dementia is this idea that people are becoming so dependent on digital devices and the internet for information that they exhibit near dementia patterns of behavior and thought. The idea here is that you lose your ability to recall information you start becoming dependent on external sources for information to provide you information that you should know naturally. You become like a dementia patient. And since your own mind is dependent upon less and less and less and less, you're so quick to go to some digital source of providing you that information, you start to lose, physically start to lose the ability to process and think as well as you could have. The effects you start showing from this are very similar to the effects of dementia. According to Psychology Today, digital dementia is explained as a term coined by neuroscientist Manfred Spitzer to describe an overuse of digital technology resulting in the breakdown of cognitive abilities. Spitzer proposes that short-term memory pathways will start to deteriorate from underuse if we overuse technology. This is not just mere speculation. They're physically observing this in people, even young people. This isn't 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s older people having these issues. These are people in their 20s that are losing the ability for basic cognitive function that they used to be able to do easily. Now, there's a whole number of reasons for this. But one of them is the dependence on digital information coming from out external sources. Some of it is diet. People eat a, a diet that causes them to gain weight and be obese. That leads to mental breakdown as well. There used to be an old saying calling people fat and dumb. It kind of went hand in hand together. There was some understanding, even though primitive as it was, that if somebody was obese, they generally were less intelligent. Well, what was really going on was that obesity and the other health things that come along with it actually physically denigrates your cognitive abilities. Part of it is because there's a lack of movement and it has been shown time and time again that your body needs to physically move for your brain to function as well as possible. It's not just about weight. That's an external sign that everybody can see the lack of physical movement in the person and the overeating or whatever it may be. But the physical movement also helps the brain function better. They've tried people, tried children in schools who exercise before a test and those who don't, the ones who exercise perform better. This is just something that is well known. There is a physical component to your ability to think and you have to move and do things and be active. Otherwise, you're not going to perform at your highest level cognitively. This also comes into play when you're not physically having to think anymore. You have a search engine to do thinking for you. You have a search engine to process facts for you. And you're not relying on your own brain to function properly anymore. Now, we have our devices and we use them and they're important and they're valuable and they can help you. But... How can you stave off these kind of things like digital dementia? How can you not become dependent upon external sources for information and be someone who is a person of character and substance who has information within themselves? They know things, they, they can reason and think and process, and they're not reliant upon some external source for their thinking. Well, one of the things you can do, and I'm talking about basic stuff here, but this will absolutely help you. Everyone uses a GPS to get places and find things. Try to physically observe each street you're going. If you're, even if you're using your GPS because that's the best way to get to a place and you don't know the land, that's all right. But physically observe each street you're driving down, each turn you're taking. What street are you turning on to? The reason for this is your brain starts to literally map out a way there. And as you do this, you physically grow that part of your brain. They've done experiments in taxi drivers, for example. The portion of the brain for processing 
maps and movement and streets and outlays and all these things is tremendously larger in their brains than a common person because they're actively using that part of their brain regularly. Another way is to read books regularly. You should be reading every day. You should be, not have to read an entire book every day, but reading a few pages or a few chapters or whatever you can get to and also reread books. Now, many people will not reread a book. They'll read a book once that has some important value in it and then they never read it again. Not understanding that you don't read it again because the information has changed. Obviously, it's the same, but you have changed. You've become a different person, hopefully. And so now when you read it in, in the light of the new person you are, because you've grown in grace, you've grown in knowledge, you've grown in wisdom, you're going to have new things pop out at you in this important work you're reading. Even though you read it before, even though you may have read it dozens of times before, something new will come from it. And will benefit you and also repetition is just good anyway for for learning stuff it's good to have repetition it's very important so if you read one of my books for example i've had people tell me well i read your book co-creators of god and it's great and this and that like well, when did you read it well i read it two years ago and did you read it again no i haven't got around to it you know i keep meaning to because it was so good okay you can't really take that knowledge in especially when it's new to you, all in one setting. Because as you learn and things start building upon themselves, you learn something, you need to really go back through it again to get more of it. This is important because many people don't do this today. They act like it's basically like in school where they're, they're forced to read a book and write a report on it and they move on to another book. There's none of that repetition that is important and it's even seen as why are you reading a book again? I've read some books dozens of times. I've read the Bible many, 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 many dozens of times. And I continue to read it every day. Why wouldn't I? But you see, you come to know things better and better. And you stave off these things like digital dementia and your loss of cognitive ability when you're actively using your brain each and every day. You're not relying upon some external device to be your brain for you, to think for you, to to process information for you. Another thing you can do is brain training apps. There's all kinds of brain training apps. Yes, you're using a digital device to do the training, but it can be very helpful. And there are a number of apps that are really good. Most of them are gamified, so they're, they're like a little game, but it helps you in your verbal communication. It helps you in your spelling. It helps you in your math. It helps you in cognitive abilities and reading comprehension, all these things that are very important and many people, once they get out of high school or college, have no more training in those areas. They've spent years going through schooling, learning math, learning reading, learning comprehension, doing all these things. And then once they're out of schooling, it just starts slowly fading away. And another thing you can do is learn a new language. Now you don't have to learn a new language, but that can be very helpful. It gets you to think differently. It gets you to approach sentence structure differently. And how is this going to be worded in this language compared to my native language? That could be very beneficial in keeping your brain going and improving, creating new neural synapses, creating new connections, and not denigrating. My friend, you've been given this great gift of life. You have this instrument, your brain, which is not your mind, but it's what your mind uses in this world to interact. You don't get two brains, you only have one. So you need to actively make sure you're taking care of it, being physically active, eating a good proper vegan diet, and doing the things you need to do to keep your cognitive abilities at their peak performance potential. And my friend, that will translate into all kinds of other areas of your life where you'll be successful and be more prominent in business and more prominent in things you want to do and you will do better and perform better and you will feel better my friend don't let yourself decline don't let yourself get into digital dementia don't let yourself become dependent on outside sources for information for wisdom for knowledge for cognitive processing use your brain that god's given you to the fullest ability that you can 
each day take those steps you can to better improve and become the person that God created you to be. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.